Hey guys, Kerry Werner here, fresh off of my third Iceman, just like in years past. It was fast from the gun, super tactical, and a group of 10 of us came to the line together. So yeah, I just wanted to walk you through my race recap. Iceman is a point-to-point -point mountain bike race. It's a mix of single track and cross-country ski trails. And if you look at the course profile, it kind of trends downhill. I mean, it's not significant, but uh, the speeds typically end up being between 18 and 20 miles an hour. Uh, on Saturday, we averaged like 18, and it was the most single track of any of the other courses I've done the last two years. So we were cruising. This is the bike I use, the Kona Hey Hey 120-120, probably a little too much for Iceman, but uh, my alternative was the Libre, which with all the added single track this year, uh, I decided to, to go for the mountain bike. I would have run the Libre if I could have put some bigger tires on it, but being a gravel bike, the biggest I could get is a 50 in the rear. And so that just kind of wasn't big enough for me, I don't think. So ended up here on the Hey Hey. A lot of, a lot of pretty big names here. Um, Andrew Lesby, Brian Motter, and Jordan Wakely. Riley Amos showed up. Braden Johnson, Alex Howes, Alexi Vermeulen. Yeah, so really fast, really fast bunch of guys at the front of the race. Um, so starting at the airport, we got off the line and immediately it was like XCO kind of. Pretty wide open for a bit uh, until about maybe five minutes off the start, you kind of hit the first single track section. So off the line, it's really this like kind of fight for position, but you also don't want to lead the whole thing because it's a good ways to go on the front. Um, it's very tactical, a lot of jockeying for position. Um, goes from wide kind of gravel road into two track and then into single track and where you hit the single track is kind of where you stay for like another five minutes or so with there not being a lot of elevation the the group kind of stays together and the single track is kind of separated by a bunch of road sections so it kind of strings out single file on the single track, not a lot of room to pass, plus the speeds are super high. Then it kind of gets compressed on the roads, a big group of us riding together on the roads, and then we hit single track again, or then we hit double track. So it's, it's, it's this constant like washing machine effect where guys from the front, from the back are going to the front. Um, and so like maintaining a position towards the front is not only crucial, but it's also kind of challenging. I didn't do a super great job of that. I was kind of always right there around 10th place. I should have kind of been more in the top five or so. Uh, and Brian Motter and I actually got caught out maybe 12, 10 miles in. There was a pretty significant climb that I think uh, Les Bronze or Alexi Vermeulen punched it and I got caught in the back. Um, I almost saw the end of my race there. Luckily, Brian came around me and helped bridge back up and then we were kind of just there together. We looked back and it was like a group of less than 10 of us. So from there, it was kind of just like, I tried to recover from that effort and then maintain a better position, which I didn't do a super good job at still, even knowing that I should have been. But from that point on, there was more double track and more road, less single track. So it was kind of, it's kind of like the, the pace was still high, but it wasn't like full gas because you know like it would take a really big effort to get away from this group of really fast guys on the road so we came into the last kind of 10 15k as a big group of like 10 to 15 dudes again it was all about maintaining position came up over a climb at around 10k in and everything was pretty cordial there wasn't a lot of attacks i thought that was going to be a big a big send but nobody really pushed super hard and then it was kind of just a good pace into the last like basically 5k riley actually overlapped wheels and went down uh, just before we turned left up woodchip hill and then from woodchip hill to the finish the pace was just full gas he got to the top and it was, 
it was easy enough to sit in, but uh, it was single file up until, up until like 2K to go when you hit the first selection of single track. And it was really important to be in the top five, probably top three wheels going into that last, that first bit of single track. So you hit that, it's super tight, then you pop out of the single track, climb up through, big group of people, and this is all within about 2K to go, 1.5K to go. Um, I was kind of just getting dangled there, I was sitting in eighth position, and the guy in front of me was at like maybe four or five bike lengths ahead, like two or three seconds, and it was all I could do to just kind of hang on. I had Jordan behind me and Brian Motter behind me, and I just kind of maintained that gap the whole way through the whole finish section. Um, I just could not muster up the energy to get up there and insert myself further into that front group. Then we dropped down to the, the road that leads into Icebreaker Hill, and um, it was just full gas again. I guess I burnt too many matches early on or just didn't have it there at the finish. Um, coming up over Icebreaker Hill, Brian came by me and so did Jordan, so then I was sitting in 10th place. I kind of just stuck on Jordan's wheel there through the finish sections, like through the, the last little bit of cyclocross track into the finish line. And uh, I managed to come around him into one of the last straightaways. Uh, and then there was a, a right-hand corner right before the finish that three of us in the top 10 all ate it on. I'm so bummed for Tyler Orschel. He had the race won by a solid, he was up in front of Alexi by at least three seconds, hit that final corner and it was just like ice. So the way the, the final corner was, there was like a little, kind of four foot bump up onto the pavement and then a 90 degree right onto the pavement. And from all the racers before us, there was a lot of gritty kind of sandy stuff tracked across the pavement. And so when you popped up with a light front end and then started turning across that pavement, it was just like ice. And Tyler went down, Andrew went down, and then I went down. And I took Jordan with me uh, I almost was able to, I actually stayed clipped in with my left foot and I was almost able to pop back up and stay in front of him to the line, but he came around me and that put me in 10th place for my third ice game. So not super stoked with the finish, but I mean, yeah, maybe like a lot of tactical errors, burning some matches when I shouldn't have, yeah, bad positioning coming into the finish. You gotta really have a perfect Iceman to win it, and uh, I did not have a perfect Iceman this year. But regardless, still one of my favorite races of the season, and not an easy one. Uh, Power-wise, I set some PRs. 368 for 20 minutes, which was during the part of the race where I told you that Brian and I almost got dropped. Um, so that was like a pretty spicy point. The whole first hour was 350 set my second best 90 minute power of all time at 340. So no cakewalk this year at Iceman, even trying to hide and sit in for most of the race. But maybe that's what happens when you're on the back just getting yo-yoed all day. Now that that's done, I've got single speed cycle cross world champs coming up this weekend in Santa Cruz. Then Hendersonville the following weekend, that's gonna be my first UCI CX weekend of the year. Then two weekends off and then it's national champs where I'll be doing the single speed on Friday and the elite race on Sunday. So the season is nearly over, but still a couple more super fun races to be had. So thanks for watching. Leave any questions in the comments below and see you at single speed cycle cross worlds.